Hello guys. Um, well, I am uh, decided to do a little impromptu video here on what I've been kind of working on the last couple days. Uh, this is a, uh, well it's basically based off of, I don't think actually Hickok made this one, but it's a I-177B uh, tube tester and uh, you've seen these in several places but uh, that's it there anyway I bought this about two years ago got a real reasonable price because it had been in a fire uh, it, it caught in fire inside and then someone had took and tried doing repairs to it and everything and uh, Evidently, well, they didn't get it working right. Uh, basically, what it does is when you go test a tube, it doesn't read right. And well, what I mean by that is, okay, if you do the line test, you know, when you first turn it on and plug it in and set your line, the meter reads upscale like it's supposed to and you adjust it and get it lined up for your line test and um, if you do like gas test uh, the meter reads proper but if you go and test a tube you know and and push the amp button you know like a snap fire tube uh, I can't remember now if uh, some of the other buttons like on some of the rectifier ones or anything if it did the same thing I'm not, I'm not sure but I know on like an amplifier test and you push the button test the amp the meter tries reading backwards it pegs to the negative below zero so I've been tracing out the circuitry and checking with uh, making sure a lot of this stuff is connected up right although a lot of it don't look like it's been touched too much there's been some resistors replaced and stuff so whoever worked on it was you know uh, doing you know trying to restore it but uh, a lot of the wiring the fire had been evidently in this area here and they replaced a lot of wiring well my process of uh, I blew up a schematic of it it's not exactly well it, it fits this but it's the schematic that actually was with it is this guy and this is hard to mark on or anything I mean I've got some pencil marks on it and stuff but you know it's and for some reason when I try scanning this I can't get it to not it, it doesn't want to scan right uh, it looks like something like what happened with this scan but it's a lot worse because otherwise I'd blown this one up and done what I'm doing here uh, but I found this online anyway I've been marking out the circuitry and what I've been doing is I thought I'd go through everything and when I run into something that's not wired right I would uh, put black marker on it which I've done here that one's not in the right place there's one lead down here that's not in the right place and uh, continuing going through and making sure you know everything's hooked up right the basically what it's doing is it's when you go test the tube it's trying to uh, it's running backwards uh, at least as far as the meter is concerned so and I know it's not the meter like I said when I do a line test uh, the meter reads proper so and, and if you do a gas test on a tube, the meter reads upscale like it should. So this has got to be something to deal with this, which so far, like I said, I've found two potential problems. I still got to continue going through it. It just takes time, you know, and uh, you mark out each one of your circuits and it makes it a lot easier to try to follow. You, you get a lot of different, you know, when you get you know with a bunch of lines going to different spots and they get all filled up it you need to blow them up and be able to see them and mark them 
individual ones out in different colors so it's a lot easier to follow uh, to keep track otherwise you'll be going along here and going okay this one goes here and then accidentally get on a different one or something and think that oh it's not wired right or or something or maybe you think it's wired right and it wasn't so anyway uh, I thought you know this is gonna be kind of short video but I'd kind of show you um, how this thing kind of works uh, it makes use of two rectifier tubes one is a gas uh, 83 rectifier type 83 it's a gas regulator uh, rectifier the other one's just a, a, a standard 5 I think it's 5Y3 or uh, I believe yeah 5Y3 and basically what they do um, now the thing I wanted to point out is this here this is a simplified schematic that's in the manual and it's not right this connection here to this point here is not right this should go on down and connect here in this lead which follows over and goes to the cathode now <clears throat> the 5Y3 um, supplies both cathode and a grid voltage and well it's actually supplying the grid voltage and then off of the center tap through a second winding is supplying for the cathode and uh, this line here what this will do this is an AC signal and what it's doing this is supplying uh, your grid bias this here supplies the varying so it's an AC signal it's like a signal going into the grid and it's across the, the cathode and the grid and then the 83 supplies the plate voltage and then depending on during the cycle um, you have a bridge circuit here and you know one, at one point in time this will be positive and another point in time this will be positive now if you had no tube in here or just had a resistor then the meter would read zero because both sides of these this is a balanced circuit um, this pot here known as L which is load um, it's two pots that are been connected together and they're set up so that they're um, wherever the wipers are on each one it's exactly the same resistance so that you know when this one say is at 40 you know it's adjusted to say like 40 ohms then this one will be 40 ohms or whatever so and the, you know one of the calibration things is adjusted this is that pot and you can actually turn these I'd, but these are actually matched up good I've already checked them but um, anyway when there's nothing going on with the tube it would read zero if there's no signal going in. when there's signal going in from this point here you get a signal varying the the bias or the grid then that varies the current on the plate which then in turn makes this conduct differently and changes the conduction on the 83 and that'll change and make it unbalanced and then the meter reads now these two load resistors here is from the fact that um, you have different uh, tubes that have different micromoles readings that they can be so there's actually three positions zero to three thousand uh, I can't remember all of them yeah, you know, up to 3,000, up to 6,000, up to 15,000. And uh, the 6 and 15 are respectively done with load resistors, where the 3,000 would be no load shunting across the meter. It just basically shunts across the meter and changes the uh, levels. So that's really basically how it operates. It, it, you're, you're, you set up a grid bias and that's predetermined already uh, for each tube and that is set by R 
which is um, this one here. This one here will set to GM, which is a predetermined value that sets these properly for the load on the plate and proper amount of voltage to the plate. And this tube will produce that grid vo uh, voltage, DC voltage for the grid. And then we have, I think it's 5 volts AC signal that comes through and feeds to the grid according to where R is set at. And uh, that varies the grid by a certain amount of voltage. Well, GM is basically nothing but how much change in voltage, how much it changes the current going through the tube. In other words, the plate current. So from that, you get your micromoles and that creates an unbalanced situation here which then causes the meter to read and that's all really basically how they work now uh, what I'm gonna have to do over time is as I find bad connections I'll mark them out like I did these and then when I'm pretty satisfied I've found everything I can find then just unsolder them and and put them back in place way they're supposed to be and hopefully it works and um, so when I get further along or if I find something different or once I get it working either way I'll make another video on it but that's what's been taking up <laughs> a lot of my time right now this thing is a you know it's it's fun to go through and uh, there's a lot of switches a lot of wafer switches and uh, several positions so anyway, I thought I'd just kind of show you um, what I'm doing. And, you know, it's not hard. It's just keep track of where you're at. And the easiest way is to blow up the schematic. So, you know, when you're looking at something this size, you know, these lines get pretty close together. And it gets a little hard to start trying to follow them through where they go through and through the switches and everything and back to the meter and back to the tubes and and the various connections so you want to blow the schematic up and get where you can you know color in you know the different circuits the different points and that makes it a lot easier to then trace because it's fun enough you know you look here these kind of just go every which way and uh, so it's fun enough just tracing them here uh, so you want to make your job as easy as possible here. So, uh, anyway, uh, I've been slowly getting back to the comments. I've been answering some of them. Um, seems like winter has really gotten to my wrist. Uh, and typing has been... I, I basically get about one comment done and, and typed and I'm hurting. So, I will get to them um, but thanks for your comments guys I, I really do enjoy hearing from you and your kind words I mean you guys are too kind um, I, I really appreciate them and stuff and um, anyway uh, there's more to come oh one other thing I, I, I mentioned in one one of the um, answers to one of the comments or one of the replies but I thought you know, you know, I'm planning on building a radio. Like I said, they'll be later this spring when I can get out in the garage and, and actually, you know, I, I don't want to be in here trying to drill and cut and do and all that kind of stuff. Um, but another thing I got thinking about that would be, um, I think you guys appreciate, is go over and build another signal generator. It would be basically the same thing as this one. But... Um, just show you how it's built, how easy they are to build, and uh, you know they're really wouldn't be they're not too expensive to build. So that if you guys you know ever want to build your own, you know you'll have a schematic, you'll have, uh, and I'll do a you know a series of video on building it and uh, and stuff, and I might do something a little different with the the next one, but. Uh, It'll be, uh, I, I thought maybe you guys might also like that. So, 
anyway that's where we're at I'm gonna go ahead and cut off here uh, I, I talk too much I, I ramble on so I'm sorry about that uh, anyway when we get further along or get it working either way I'll make another video but uh, if it's gonna take a while I'll make a, a second video and then a third video just showing you what you know what I run across so uh, thanks for watching uh, thanks for my new subscribers and thanks for your comments and I am trying to answer them if nothing else if this weather keeps going on I might just make a video and answer uh, comments so anyway thanks again guys and I'll see you in the next video